we had a few other road trips where we also had about an hour and a half and two hours of uh, dirt and we have covered every single hole and I got to tell you I don't know where the dust gets in but it gets in it sneaks in wherever it can it'll get in we we're beside ourselves to the point where we thought man we're not going to do any more dirt roads and you know like camping in Australia especially if you're doing the outback is that possible not really we've come up with an idea and we're going to test it today with you hopefully this will work and it's going to be your dust buster a way of how you can kill the dust and not have the same dust ingress in your camper it wasn't expensive to do and in down below in the links we'll be showing you where you can buy these uh, products make sure please while you're here to click like if you like what I show you today and by all means please subscribe because you'll learn other tips and tricks along the way Welcome back to Wonderlust with Dewitt & Co. Nice to see you guys again. Here behind us we have um, our little Bindi, the teardrop camper, which is becoming a regular on the show. And we did a big improvement. What happened here was we were out here a number of weeks ago and we did the same trip we're about to take you. It's about a 16 kilometer journey on a dust dirt road. It was our first time we took Bindi on a dirt road and when we got to our destination for our camp for the night and we opened Bindi up we discovered we had a whole lot of dust inside. The dust ingress was incredible. Like I gotta tell you it was a nightmare to get all the dust out. Uh, Camilla spent ages uh, just going through pulling everything out. She's a bit of a clean freak you can't blame her for that. Um, but it was it was terrible anyway we did a few things in between time to try and stop it for instance when we had to come out on the same road we organized putting patches all over the vents and taping everything up in hope of stopping the dust ingress well it failed it stopped it a little bit but still there was so much dust it was just a nightmare again okay let's get on here so here is the A to Z on putting together your dust buster all the material parts that you need and the method that you should follow. In this photo you can see the Safari Snorkel. You can buy this at a four-wheel drive center. There's a number of different outlets. Uh, you can Google it online, Safari Snorkel. Now it's my advice to get the original Safari Snorkel because they actually work better. They have a better ram head system and a better flow of where water ingress will possibly move out of the unit before coming down the um, PVC pipe. Safari Snorkel is the best way to go. Now you'll note that it has a 90 millimeter um, fitting and for this you also need to buy a piece of 90 millimeter PVC pipe and a 90 millimeter flange. The pipe was purchased at Bunnings, very cheap. I think you buy it in one or two meter lengths of pipe. It's not expensive. You're only going to use a little bit of that. You might have a little bit of 90 millimeter PVC pipe laying around your house. I don't know. But I just used a new piece that I purchased from Bunnings and also the flange. I was not able to purchase at Bunnings. So I found that at a plumbing shop. Now on the inside where that comes into the cabin, I found this grill. So it's not really a grill. It's a PVC stormwater offset grate. I'm using that as my inside grill and you can see the important part here is that it's 90 millimeter and the reason I chose this also was because the stainless steel piece comes out and that allowed me to put the air conditioning filter material in layers inside that grate. So additional to the foam on the outside of the Safari Snorkel, on the inside I have changeable air conditioning filter 
and you can wash that or you can just cut out new pieces of it and replace so very easy to do there the next point then is then to find somebody or be very handy at your tools and start drilling in this case i was able to get a good friend of mine a vietnamese chap by the name of kung who was willing to do the job for me here you can see we're lining up and in he goes he's drilling the hole in the camper obviously you need a bit of faith here that this is going to work because you're drilling holes in your camper and the last thing you want is to have a holy camper uh, in other words you don't want to have a mess uh, with this and uh, hopefully whoever does do it knows what they're doing on the inside you now pull apart the grate and here you can see i've got the um, the back plate of that and that gets pushed into that hole from the other side and you screw it in place so it's not going to move. Then on the outside, you fill the um, gap between the, the grate and the camper with a lot of Sikaflex. Just plug it all the way in, be generous, put a lot in there. That goes all around in that area. And then you push the piece of already measured PVC pipe into that slot. Make it nice and firm. Don't worry about how much um, gunk you got there around there because next you're going to put up the PVC flange on there and you just press it into place as much as you can. Once that's on and everything's pushed in nice and solid, we're then going to put a bead of more Seeker Flex around the outside of that flange. The important thing here is that you make it nice and neat around there. So you put a nice uh, bead on that, make sure it's, it's not sticking out everywhere because that is going to be seen and then also you're going to put a bead around the tube itself where the pvc pipe meets the flange on the inside there so everything is totally covered there's no way you're going to get water coming in through that system because it's it's nicely sealed up now on the inside you go there you have the um the grill plate there that simply will come off and you put your layers of filter and put it back in place. I think it looks neat. Um, please comment your down below and let us know what your thoughts are on putting this together. On the outside, on goes your Safari snorkel, foam filter, and you can see the hose clip that's supplied by the um, Safari snorkel, which tightens up against the uh, PVC pipe. You can tighten it on nice and tight, so that's not gonna go anywhere when you're speeding along the highway at 120 kilometers an hour. And that, folks, is it. All you need to do for your new dust buster. Now, what that does, what I've created here is hopefully a positive pressure inside the cabin. Because simply with all caravans, campers, and in particular the teardrop, you can see the shape of the camper. What it causes is a negative pressure on top of the camper or somewhere to the back, and that causes like a suction inside the interior is like a big vacuum cleaner this experiment we're not going to cover any of those vents or anything we're leaving them totally open and boy we're hoping on the other end we end up coming out without dust let's hope this works coming along in and i'll show you what happens on the inside have a look in here up on the grill you can see there's a grill plate up there that has also got some filters in there let me know what you did or how this went for you if you decide to do it. I'm sure there's other ways of going around it. I do believe Dometic now have come out with a system you can buy for about $2,500. Well, this all up cost me about $200. So it's a lot cheaper. And let's see how it works. Catch you at the other end. We're on the dirt road. Here we are. Got a few kilometers to go on this. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see the outcome. Dust ingress from the um, from your own vehicle is not happening. I'm guessing the snorkel could get a little bit of dust in it from approaching vehicles, and we have one approaching shortly up ahead. But once again, I have three filters on there, and it is designed to operate on cars, you know, on diesel cars. It's just the top part of the it's a ram head of the snorkel system that you see on uh, four-wheel drive vehicles and so it's set up like that that top filter alone cuts out 90 percent of the dust 
and I have two more filters inside. Should be good. And here we go. We've got them coming past the four-wheel drive. There's going to be dust there for sure, going in that snorkel area. So this is a good test. We really are going to know if we get um, dust in there. Tell you what, I'm hoping not. This was my big experiment. And uh, you know, happy camping is uh, going to be no dust. I hope so. Tonight we'll celebrate if it does work and it'll be your benefit too. All right, let's see how we go. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. The big, the big reveal on how it's turned out. We're gonna have a look right now and have a look in the cabin. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like it was successful. This is looking good. First, oh no, hang on. I'm seeing a little bit of dust. No, not as good as I thought. Still a little bit of ingress there, down there in the bottom, through that vent. Yeah, we're gonna open the back now and then that's gonna be a, a real proof of the pudding. Because my God, this is where it usually is the worst. Just give me a moment. Okay, this is it. Voila. I think we have success. There is no dust. No dust in here whatsoever. I think we have a win. At least 90% win. A cheap hack that seems to have worked. We'll continue this experiment, but for now, I'm gonna say see you later as I need to unpack and get ready for the night shoot. I can't believe that. No dust at all. No dust. It's amazing. Sweetheart, can you believe? No dust. No dust. Yeah. It's a win. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs>